Because a lot of people were, I don't want to do this because white people don't get mad. To hell with white people. You know, we don't need to consider them. So are you trying to start a business We're We're more than just a business. We're coming to take over everything. Because if we get elected to the mayor's office, to the city council office, to the school districts, we begin to change laws because we have the power to change laws. It's okay, but I can get you together mm -hmm. and we're here. But we need more faith in the hospital. Mm -hmm. We don't have one hospital. Mm -hmm. And they talking about getting them out, checking them out. Mm -hmm. Cook in the water, bathe in the water. 
And then when it all came out, then it was, oh, yeah, we knew about it, but it was the city's job to fix it. No, it was your job as well. Oh. Mm -hmm. But they looked the other way when it comes to us. And so all of this looking the other way while we suffer and then our children suffer. So you have children in Flint, Michigan with, with, with defects, you know, birth defects that will be the, in the belly of the mama when she was dealing with that water. And then they, they come out and they're not normal children and they can't reproduce. This is, this is a systematic torture that they have been doing to us since we've been here. And so Black First says that that time is ended. We cannot continue to let that go. If you look at the, um, the mass shooter that happened in New Zealand recently, his thing, yeah, he, it, and he killed up these people. And his thing was that he was angry because the white birth rate is at a zero percent. Their birth rate is not growing, so they're dying out as a race. And our birth rate has continued to go. So in their minds is, I'm gonna kill as many as them as I can. And so you see more and more that they're coming out trying to kill us. Just the other day in Atlanta, white boy walked up to an apartment complex, start shooting it up. Shooting it up. And he walked off. And he walked off. Sorry. Yeah. And came back and did it again. Yeah. You know, that's unacceptable. There ain't none of them people in that uh, apartment complex did anything to him. Oh, yeah. But yet they desire for us to be dead. See, Black First says we can't, we can't go out like that. We got to protect each other because at the end of the day, we are all we got. There's nobody coming. For us, we have to be the solution to each other's problems. That's why it's so important for our people to understand Black First and to understand the love that we have for each other. Because when I look at you, you are my brother, and I see myself when I look at you. And I want you to live just like I want myself to live. Because we are important. We matter. But the system will say, oh, you don't, you don't matter. You're not important, but we are. We are. And so with we standing up to support one another, that's showing love for each other, and that's showing the world that we're not going to take this foolishness. We're not going to take this foolishness. And I think uh, the system is so screwed up that they just want us to kill each other. Mm-hmm. Shoot each other, mm -hmm. and that's what's going on. Part of sometimes, mm -hmm. black person is shy for killed almost every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 that's why we have to we have to stop it. We have to get to them and say, "Hey, look, you doing this at the pleasure of your enemy? You killing another victim? You killing another victim of this enemy?" And see, when we wake up and understand that we are all we got and we shouldn't be killing each other, we take our, our rage on the enemy who has well earned a destruction. He has earned an ass whooping. He's earned it. And it's our right. It is our duty to give them everything that they have earned. Right. Because they give it to us and we ain't did nothing. Nothing. We ain't did nothing to them. But yet they look at us for destruction. So no, we say no. We're not going to allow that. We're not going to allow that. We're going to love each other enough that we defend each other. We will defend each other to the hilt. To the hilt. Because that's what Black First is all about. It's that Black love to understand who we are and what we do. So, you know, we're building our own army. We're building our own army because we know we got to protect each other. The enemy, white folks ain't going to protect us. Why would they when they're killing us? You know, that's something for us to have to do. So we got to get our, our, our youth out there that's killing each other and say, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. We're going to point our guns at the real enemy. 
We're going to set up training programs so you can learn. You want to be a soldier? We're going to teach you how to be a soldier. But you're going to be a black first soldier. And so that we can control business. We can control commerce. We control our politics. We control everything that we have our hands in. And we have the ability and we have the know-how to make it happen. It's a glorious thing. It's a glorious day just to even be alive, knowing we're living in the change of worlds. Because this is exactly what is the change of worlds. The Most High said that our enemy lifespan is over, so they can't reproduce. Every birth they have, they're having a death. Mm -hmm. So they understand that by 2050, they will not be the majority in America. They won't be. And we understand that. So who's next? We are. So we got to stand up now and do everything that needs to be done. We got to take power. Ain't no such thing that we're going to go and ask them, can you let me be in power? No. 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 We take what we want. You know, they did it. They took, they took this country. We're going to take what we want now. And we're going to do right by each other because we are born to do exactly that. The white man's day is over. This day is over. So, you know, if I don't know if you ever if you ever watch my video channel, you you see that I don't I don't hide my face. Mm -hmm. I'm very public about what I believe, what I want, and what we're about to do. You know, so we're out here and we're going to different cities in Mississippi looking at okay, is this one good enough? Is this one good enough? Because we're starting out with one and we're going to continue to take and continue to take and continue to take. And we don't give a damn about the white man. They're not even on our list to even be considered. We can't stand them. Because at the end of the day, they are our worst enemy. They are our worst enemy. And, and we have, as black people, we have a soft heart. We do. We, we have a soft heart. We, we, yeah, we yeah. love everybody. Yeah. Okay, just setting this up. <clears throat> All righty then. What time is it? Three thirty-three p.m. on a Sunday. Okay. Um. Hmm. I just wanted you to hear some of that. That's a live video being streamed from the Brother Maurice Muhammad channel. And uh, Brother Maurice and Brother Adar are actually live right now in the state of Mississippi, in, a, in Clarksdale. And prior to Clarksdale, I believe they were in Cahoma County, or, or the city of Cahoma, Mississippi. So they are live in Mississippi. And I wanted you to uh, hear a brief, that brief live stream for a second, because they are actually in Mississippi and they were inspired by the words that come from this platform. And so, uh, who am I? I cannot be angry. I cannot be upset. I should be happy that one would take and be inspired by the words and the, uh, the plan or the concept 
of what we call the Mississippi Campaign or Operation Exodus Mississippi. I am, of course, Angel Snub Nub Seven, your soul brother, number one. And I, I wanted to make that very clear, especially in this day and time. And that for myself, I don't have time, nor do I like to go back and forth with another victim of oppression, another victim of racism. That's not my thing. I don't like it. Like I've said before, though, now, quite honestly, you know, I, I, I enjoy it. I love a, what they, I love a knockdown, drag out fight. I like that kind of stuff. I, I like the beefing. I like it myself, personally. It's not, it's not so much that I actually enjoy the beefing, but what it does, it gives you an opportunity to match your sword with the sword of another. Unfortunately, when we see that our sword is not as good as the other man's sword, we're still going to, going to continue to do what we do. Case in point, Bruce Lee, even though Bruce Lee show many folks the limitations in their, their art, it makes no difference because as you can see, those forms of martial arts are still used today. People don't like being corrected. They don't like change. And some people are just traditional. And for us, in the situation that we find ourselves in, that's a big problem. Because all those things that we find or hold traditional, these things are not allowing us to do what's necessary in order to get ourselves out of this condition once and for all. What you're looking at is a way of life. I'm going to say that again. Oppression. Racism, this struggle has become a way of life. And so the reality is, since you view slavery, this oppression, living under racism, since we view it as a way of life, you might complain. Don't you know what being institutionalized is? Being institutionalized is being comfortable in your incarceration or whatever that which incarcerates you or whatever system that you get caught up in, however you're programmed. This does not mean you won't have, you won't complain, you won't get upset, you march and you protest or whatever. But the reality is, you still don't mind the system. Because if you get tired of the system, then you want to get out, like Michael said, by any means necessary. We're not to that point. When prisoners get to the point where, look, it's time for me to go. Whether you like them or not, whoever you can get that can help you with this jailbreak, I don't care who it is. Because once we get out of this, you can go your way, I can go my way. But the thing about that also is, during the process of the jailbreak, a lot of people will find that they don't like each other as, as much as they thought they did because this camaraderie, this friendship to gain you something that you really, really want, which is your freedom from a jail or a prison, is much more important than the hate or the dislike you thought you had for this person that actually helped you get 
what you want. So I want us to, and I wanted us to listen to a small portion of that live stream because I want you to I want you to understand that even though there is difference in uh, the methods, this does not mean I am against it because like they say, every little thing helps. And for those who claim that they have a problem with Brother Maurice, then what are you doing? Because you're damn sure not doing a, nothing for me. So don't come to me and tell me, you own Maurice. You take your happy ass and unsubscribe and get the hell away from me. Because Brother Maurice is actually in Mississippi. Now, for me, that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. But it's not enough. My position is, if I can't get the whole thing now, I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing at all. I don't want nothing. Because at that rate, you're going to be looking at another 100 years. You need something big. You need something now. You need to take it all. Condition the minds of the people. Use the tools that your enemy have given you. But you don't know that. You, you're not open to new strategy. There's something that I learned when I was locked up in the nut house, you want what you want when you want it. And in your lifetime, you're not going to get it, and you're never going to get it. Hey, hey, sister, you're never going to get it, never going to get it. <laughs> you're never going, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. Because you're not doing things right. I'm going to, why do, Black people reject Operation Exodus Mississippi. First of all, I don't know. I don't know if black people reject Operation Exodus Mississippi. I don't know. And you don't know either. Because there are 40 to 70 million in this country. They don't know. So how can they reject what they don't know? Now, there is a small handful on social media that have heard. And from what I see on, on YouTube, they really don't have nothing bad to say. Really, they, they don't. But this is the problem. I, that's what I want to talk about. See, a lot of the problem for some of those who actually, and really, this is why when I first decided to bring this idea forward, I started off trying to contact the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, because Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam, is already in the position to do this and could easily get it done. Because you want the state. You want the whole state. I don't want a town. I don't want a city. I don't want a neighborhood. I want to take control of this state. The Nation of Islam is in the position. They have the, they have the influence to do this thing almost overnight. Problem. The problem is, it's coming from this platform. That's the, that's the main problem. The problem is a lot of us want to give credit, and that's what it's about. We really don't care about our whether the job get done, done or not. We want to give something that we believe in 
or whatever credit. So everyone will know that this is not a black Muslim thing. Where y'all getting that from? What's what's Mississippi campaign? What's that? That's not the three-year economic program. That's not the five-year economic program by Elijah Muhammad. That's none of the programs and the ideas of the nation of Islam. What are y'all doing? That's the number one program. You they will not they will not support that which don't come from their house or they think they cannot control. So they don't want nothing to do with it. Because you would rather stay a damn slave. You'd rather continue to live comfortable being an institutionalized Negro and live this way of life rather than you see something that is good, you see something that makes sense. And you think that you're hurting me. You're not hurting me. The idea and concept of soul already here. I'm just, I'm just building on it. You think you hurt me and you keep talking about the ancestors this and the ancestors that. But you reject what come from your ancestors because y'all live in the past. 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. You live in the, in the past. That's one, that's one of your problems. You live in the past. And the concept or the idea of taking control of a state still did not come from me. Like I told you. It come from our ancestors. Our ancestors were already doing that. If it was not for the uh, Jim Crow, the violence of the South, the way our people was moving, town by town, city by city, they were going to take control of the state sooner or later anyway. It was the Pecklewoods that stopped them. And now you stop yourself. Your prime example is your own ancestors. You think you think that when you say, I don't want to hear that Operation Exodus Mississippi stuff, you think that you heard me. You are rejecting something that your ancestors was doing and they was being successful. The devils, these demons stopped them. Like they stopped them in Tulsa, Oklahoma and other places. You're not hurting me. You just show that you are a liar and you're a hypocrite and you're fake. That's the only thing that you're showing. You're not hurting me. Because my ideas come from nature. My ideas come from a people who y'all said supposed to be free and they are acting as free people. They don't have a choice. So they need to, they need to do their own thing. So they were out and they were making moves. And eventually they would have taken control of these states because we were here far longer than the Japanese the Asians, the Haitians, the Africans, the Mexicans, we've been here long enough, our population big enough to already do it. But unlike these other immigrants that some of us want to cry about, there were laws, there were actions to, 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 to purposely stop us from doing exactly that. There are no laws on the books to stop the Chinese or the Africans or other Asians or the Mexicans. There are no laws to stop them from doing nothing. In fact, the government actually assists them. You can't get a bank loan. You can't get any assistance. Everything that we got comes from our blood, sweat, and tears. Everything. We were given nothing. Period. And maybe that's the reason why we're so lazy and tired. That's not to make mockery, but you know, when you are, if you are a child on a beach and you're building a sand castle, and every time you start getting your, your castle the way you want it, here comes some sucker, step on your sand castle and knock it down, how many times you gonna keep rebuilding it? <laughs> and you know, I remember I used to do that with ants. You know, ants make their little, uh, their little mounds, and, and it builds up, and I come by and knock the mound down. Next thing I know, the little ants start coming back. 
and they build it back up and I knock it down, pretty soon the ants stop. That's what happened to us. It's not that we're lazy. It's not that we're not smart. It's not that we're not talented. You get tired of somebody. If you in a fight and they keep knocking you down, pretty soon you're going to get tired and say, I'm tired of getting, you get tired of knocked down. Okay, you won. Forget it. So look, Send a shout out to the chat room. Send a shout out to Facebook. What's up there? Mr. Funk and Elwes and Syrian, thank you so much for joining me. So that's where we stand. Many of these people actually believe you are hurting me because you reject Operation Exodus Mississippi. You're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself because you claim to be religious, many of you do, and you say that you ask God to give you the solution to help you out of this condition. You got it. You got it. Matter of fact, it's been here before many of us was even born. When our ancestors was building and actually in a position to take control of a state, I was not a boy, I was not born. My mother was not born. Now, I was a little boy when I heard the concept of soul, but I don't know where it come from. It come from us, our people who are alive today. Don't think that you can come here and impress me, talk about something that happened 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, what they did 3,000 years ago, or even what they did 100 years ago, I'm not impressed. I don't care. That's nice. You learn from their mistakes. Where did they go wrong? And you fix it so that you can go right. You continue to do wrong because you have not learned the mistakes that, they, that was done in the past. And you are not open to new strategy, new thought, and you really don't understand the situation that you're in. So look, so I don't want you to think, and it really never has been the case. Why should I be against anyone who wants, especially when they have been inspired by the platform, this platform. And I was inspired by thinking about what our ancestors already done. Like they said, there's nothing new under the sun, just a new way of doing things. Because clearly that which was done then, for some reason, it did not work. And see, that's a problem. Syrian says people want and believe different things. The, Mus the Muslims want an Islamic state and Christians want a utopia. That's a problem. We have too many wants. Do you know the reason why we have too many wants? Because we really don't know what we want. The only thing you know that you are trapped in a cage. You know how animals do? Some animals, when they are trapped in a cage, they just start running around just going all kinds of which way that's what you're seeing in the so-called black community just people just doing everything they can think of just just scratching at the walls pulling at the bars you know how it is <laughs> hey what's up there Brittany? you know how it is when you get um uh, you know how it is when you get some of us get locked up and, and, and you're angry at the time. You're just pulling at the bars, mess, throwing the bed sheets around. That's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing. You don't know what to do. So you just, you're just confused and just acting out. But there's a mindset that you have and you're never going to get out of this condition. The only thing you're going to do is be comfortable in it. It has become a way of life. That's not what I'm about. 
the strategy, the attitude that I have, we need to end this once and for all. You need to end this once and for all. Syrian says we need to find points we can agree upon. I, I you know, that's that's absolutely correct. But this is the problem. The problem is many of these people want you to kiss their ass. I'm not kissing your ass. You want to be a slave because I don't have any children. None of my children is going, going to continue to live in this mess. That's the reason why I decided as a child I'm not going to have children because my children are not going to live in this mess. Now, if you want to hand this mess down to your children, so be it. I don't have any children. I'm actually doing you a favor because the answer is right here. The way that it was revealed on this platform, Operation Exodus Mississippi. You don't do it that way, you ain't got nothing coming. If you want something now, you ain't got nothing coming. Because you're not going to change this overnight. Because the people's mind, even your mind, you don't have the right mind to be a free person. That's the reason why you're going to stay a damn slave because you don't have the mind of a free person. You think it, you still think like a slave, like a trapped animal in a cage. There was a scene from, what they call that? That movie, Enter the Dragon. Y'all know I like Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee, you know, he, he was doing his little fighting thing. And then he, he went into this uh, space and all these walls came down. And Bruce Lee automatically knew he couldn't get out of it. So why waste your energy? He took his nunchucks, put it around his, his neck, and just sat there, curled up, and just chilled out. Why waste your energy in a situation you know you can't get out of? It's a waste. So what Bruce Lee done in this instant, save your energy, wait for, you, for the right time. That's, that's what Bruce Lee done. So we're just, we're just clawing, clawing at things because you really don't know what to do. You act out of emotion rather than intelligence. That's, that's, that's one thing about black folks, soul brothers and sisters. We act on emotion. We, we are reactionary. We don't act until something happens to us and we're emotional over things. And we cry and we moan and we groan. We emotional over stuff. We want to feel good about things. Feeling good is not going to get you out of this situation. Once and for all. You want to feel good, then you stay in this lifestyle. You stay in this lifestyle. Because that's what it has turned into. What we call black revolution, what we call black struggle, or whatever y'all want to call it, whatever it is, it's a lifestyle. Because you should be wanting to get out of this once and for all. I don't have to like you. You don't have to like me. In order to do something big, that's one of the reasons why we can't do Operation Mississippi is because in order to pull this off, you're going to have to get yourself together and you don't, and the reality is you really don't like black folks. That's the reality is. You want somebody for your own personal slave plantation. That's what you want. You really don't give a damn about what is in the best interest of the masses. The masses will never, the masses will never be what you think that they are, that you want them to be. Never. We will never all be Christian. We will all never be Muslims. 
or Hebrews or Moors or Kemetic, we all will never be that. So that's delusional. That's not going to never happen. And even among, and even among you who believe, who believe the same way, there is still different because you can be a Christian, I can be a Christian, you can be a Christian, but I like Apple and you don't like Apple. So we trying. Okay, okay, Brittany. So, so you're trying to, so you're trying, we're trying to make a decision. Should we have an apple tree or a peach tree on the, on the, on the, in the yard? That's going to be a conflict right there between Christians. And somebody might get punched in the face because we can't decide, should we have an apple tree or a peace tree? Matter of fact, even in the world, Christians are killing Christians. But they all claim they believe in Jesus. Muslims, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm gonna finish this this statement real quick. Um, okay, I wanted to get put on speakerphone because I wanted to speak too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was just telling them how everybody we're not the same. Even even in the same belief, we're not the same. All over the world, we have Muslims are killing Muslims. Christians are killing Christians, and I'm very sure back in the day. Hebrews was killing Hebrews, you know, that type of thing. So we need to stop tripping. Everybody's never going to be the same. That's that's just delusional thinking. That's delusional thinking. The only thing I want is to get the job done. And we have this. We have the method. You do it the right way, we can get over this hump really, really fast. But since you want to do this and somebody want to do over that, it's all matched up. Y'all confused, scratching at the cane. Well, then just enjoy your captivity. That's all I can say. You are not, look, you're not hurting me. I actually have people coming to me, actually believe because uh, this is the reason why I don't like, this is the reason why I don't like Operation Exodus Mississippi. I don't give a damn what you don't like. I can care less. Kiss my backside. I don't care what you don't like. Take your happy ass on and be a good slave. That's all I can say. You're not hurting me none. You're only hurting yourself. Because all those things that, that y'all trying to do have been done and it don't work. Simple as that. You don't know whether or not Operation Exodus Mississippi will work or not because you never tried it. So how you know something going to work if somebody talk, if somebody tell you, well, I don't think that that tire is going to fit on your car. How you know it's not going to? It's got to be a reason why you know that this tire is not going to fit on the car unless you try it. So you don't know that. But uh, like I said, you're stuck in the past. You're not open to new strategy. You think that somebody, you think that these people, you want everybody to be your personal slaves. I'm not going to be your personal slave, so you can. So you can uh, go ahead and, 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 and X me off your list because I'm not interested in being your personal slave. The only thing I want is freedom, justice, and equality for all of us because all of us deserve it. I don't give a damn about your personal background, what you like and don't like and nothing like that. I could care less. All of us deserve to be out from up under and oppressed. And I will add a few more things, but of course I got my little sister here on, I'm pretty sure she just, once she just got something to say, just all balled up and I just got to get this out. So I want to welcome to the to the platform our sister Brittany. Sister Brittany, folks are saying, uh, sending greetings to you. Hey, so thank you for um, letting me get on the show and talk. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. So I wanted to elaborate a little bit on what you, or expound a little bit on what you uh, said about why black people don't want to or can't, or for whatever reason, just don't come together when it comes to the overall liberation of black people outside of religion and different socio 
social beliefs, right? Yes. The reality is, and I think that this was kind of touched on when you said black people just don't like blackness, mm-hmm. and, which is very true. But I think to get in depth with the reason, it is because a lot of black people still have this love for white people mm. that has been ingrained in them through generation, and they don't want to separate from white people. Although they want to claim that they love being black. And one thing that you can't do is want to be around or amongst your oppressor and then want liberation. Mm -hmm. Even the most so-called liberal white person is still for white supremacy, Mm -hmm. meaning the control and the domination of whiteness over every other person. And that is the misconception and the slave docile mentality that a lot of black people have is this, oh, I'm for black, but that doesn't mean that I hate white. You (laughs) can't love your oppressor and want liberation. That's Mm -hmm. one. Two, when it comes to black women, and if anybody finds offense to this, then I could care less. (laughs) But we also have to understand that black women are also supposed to be a part of this liberation. Mm -hmm. But you can't wear a hair weave and be a part of a black liberation movement because ultimately what you're saying is you don't like being black. You like being, you want to speak on black issues to the point where it affects you or it makes you feel bad because white people are not accepting you but you don't honestly want liberation. Wearing a hair weave or straightening your hair, it does a lot subconsciously, but you have a lot of people, particularly black women, who want to wear these hair weaves that make the excuses, uh, well, you know, this is a protective style. It's just that, you know, black women, we can do our hair multiple ways, but most black women are not doing their hair to mimic black Afro-textured styles. They're doing that to mimic the styles of a European or a Caucasoid or a Neanderthal person. And the Neanderthal person is a person, anybody who has straight hair. And so you can't be for black liberation and you're still trying to look like white women, which is the majority of black women in, in America. And then also, too, you can't have black liberation with black men who date black women mm. who wear white women's hair on their heads. Because ultimately what you're saying is, although I have this woman in a black body, if she, if she got the, this white woman's hair on her head, I'm satisfied or I'm attracted to it. So there's, there's small, minute little details in the reason why we can't come together as a whole that, that, are oftentimes overlooked because they're seen as something that's really irrelevant. But the hair that a person puts on their head, the way a person chooses to wear their hair, the types of hairstyles that a man chooses to to allow his woman to wear, it affects the mental. Because your head, your on top of your head, it affects your thoughts. You know what I mean? And so you can tell a lot about a person based on that. Now, that's not to say that every black woman that wears her natural hair is so pro-black, because mm-hmm. you've got a lot of those women that date white men. Mm-hmm. But that, that, that is a big, a big start on how a person's mindset is. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's one of the main reasons why black people are not liberating, because the only time they want to speak up is when their white slave masters treat them like shit, kill black people, you know, call them niggers and all this type of stuff. And and they're not upset because they're upset because these crackers are saying they're upset because white people don't want to allow them to the picnic. What do you mean? Like the pick a nigger picnic, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that is the issue that a lot of black people ultimately have. So when you're talking about people coming together, these people ultimately don't even like being black. You have black women, and this is the ultimate, this is the ultimate fact, right? You have black women that appear to be very pro-black, right? And they may appear to be dark skin or brown skin women, but you never know. A lot of these women got bleaching cream in their home. I remember there was a girl back home in Miami. She was a, a rather light-skinned person. And um, we were going out to the beach. Now, she was crazy as hell. She had a wig on, too. <laughs> um, and she was in the bathroom getting ready to getting dressed and taking a shower and stuff. And I looked at her her little dresser where, you know, most women have their perfumes and all of their little amenities 
you know, mm-hmm. to get dolled up or whatnot. And so I looked, what did Siri and June say? Uh, For the reason why her comment got retracted. I don't know. She took, uh, they took it back themselves. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, so um, I was looking at her cabinet and I saw that she had a, a cocoa butter lotion, but it had a lightning cream agent in it. And it said lightning cream. And I wondered... Like, how in the hell, like, one day her skin would be a little bit darker, but then the next day or so it would be a little bit, like, softer, like, lighter or whatever. And so I was like, wow, that's very, that's very strange. But to make a long story short, she was very crazy and had a disdain for blackness. And Syrian Jews, whoever you are and whatever you look like, appearance is very important because, first and foremost, how you choose to present yourself shows a lot about how it is that you feel about yourself. And the appearance of black people have been so broken down to the point where black people want to look white that if you have a black woman that's supposed to be pro-black with a blonde wig and green contacts in her eyes, is she really for black people? Absolutely not. So when it comes to black people, appearance is important. I'm not sure if you yourself are black or if you date biracially or, or interracially, but you are clearly not a conscious black person. You're very much so an all-inclusive black person. And so, yes, if a black man chooses to date a white woman, usually because of her appearance, that does matter. So if you're for blackness and supposed to be pro-black, then that should be represented on your outside. No other race of people have been demonized, crucified for their appearance, the same as black people. So yes, appearance is very important when it comes to black people. And if you don't like being black, it's going to show in your appearance as well as in other things, such as the way you speak, the things you say, and so forth. And so that's one of the main reasons why I think a lot of people rejected that Exodus Mississippi thing that you had going on, because, you know, people are complacent and comfortable with what they have going on. Mm -hmm. They're just, if there's a complacency, um, and people just aren't really trying to, to, to liberate themselves because ultimately they feel defeated. What do you think? Mm, mm, mm. Well, I was given an example of, you know, in, in, our, in our case where I was talking about the, the sand castle mm. and it's only so much, it's only so much somebody can take. When you when they're trying to, to to do something and somebody keeps coming to tear it down, that makes you that makes you you know makes you want to give up because you know you can't keep getting knocked down all the time. You know, during the sixties, we were our ancestors was trying to get themselves up, but uh, but as you know, there were forces that constantly was doing things to keep them knocked down. Then we have to deal with not only forces from the outside, but you have forces from the inside. Because the enemy knows if they throw a, a certain amount of crumbs, then you're gonna have people from the inside fighting the ones that's, that's, that's struggling because they say, ain't nothing wrong with the system. Look, look at the crumbs I got. I got three biscuits. See, you only got a half a biscuit. I got three biscuits. So um, that's a problem when you have forces from the outside and the uh, inside. Can I say something really quick? Yeah. Sierra and Jude. Mm-hmm. The church can't win young men, particularly young black men, because most of the church is homosexual. It has absolutely <laughs> nothing to do with women being pastors and speakers. The majority of churches do not have women as pastors and speakers. Most black churches partake in pedophilia and homosexuality, which is what they get from those white men that they basically take after. When you are trying to be under a certain cult or a certain mindset, you take on the ways of that environment. And that is where a lot of pedophilia and homosexuality, and as a matter of fact, uh, hatred for women actually take place in, mm-hmm. place in a lot of the black churches. Mm-hmm. So that is incorrect. Young men are being turned into women in the black mm-hmm. churches. So um, women don't have that much power. In no black church. I would even I would even go a little further. And I know a lot of folks get angry at, at me, but I don't see 
personally, I don't see men, period. You can be around these so-called men and they're not, they're not men to me. Now, what I say, what comes out of, out of my mouth, if you say it, these, these uh, hey, Don, these cowards, these old pathetic uh, men will call you out of your name and things of that nature. They won't bring that to me. And I was telling, I was, I'm saying the same thing that a woman would say to them. These men are, like I told you all the time, Sister Brittany, these guys, these so-called men are weak. They're weak. I, you know, they can talk tough all they want to. They can talk tough, but that don't mean nothing. I'm not impressed Absolutely. by. I had a guy. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you that you mentioned that these men are weak. Yeah, they're and, weak. Uh, I, there was a guy that I was because I went to go get my car looked at, right? Mm -hmm. And there was this white guy who worked amongst all black mechanics. However, the owner of the shop is white, come to find out. So that's the reason why he was there. He was there basically getting the major work and getting paid the most. The old white trash cracker <laughs> that chewed tobacco and had uh, rotten teeth. But, yeah. you know, that's just how it is in Georgia. So anyway, um, this guy turned down doing service for my vehicle and I went off. Mm -hmm. And I let it be known that I felt like it was some racist shit. You know, a lot of white people, especially in the South, they don't like proper talking blacks. They feel like you're an old uppity nigger. Uh -huh. And because of the self-hatred that black people have, you got other blacks that go along with this old dog cracker and, you know, treat their own kind disrespectful. Like, oh, this old uppity nigger. This, you know what I mean? The thing with when it comes to black people, and not to divert from the topic, because I'm going to stay on it and stick yeah. on it, but the thing with black people, specifically, and white people, is that if a black person is not famous, then there is no way that you are supposed to carry yourself upright and like you're somebody. Mm -hmm. If they don't know who you are, which means that if I don't know you, nigger, you shouldn't have no pride in yourself. If we don't give you pride, you shouldn't walk with pride. So, and that's just what that is. So that's usually what I oftentimes go through specifically in Georgia. But um, the black guy, when I was like, this is like a plantation, this is some racist shit, like y'all ain't gonna do nothing. This black guy came out of his motherfucking mouth, excuse my language. Uh -huh. This black guy came out of his mouth and said to me that black men have no power and I'm just trying to keep my job and we may be strong, but we're broken and there's nothing I can do about anything that's going on because I don't own the shop and that's just what it is. This is how it's set up. This is Georgia. And then he tried to go on and say that he's from Chicago. He's not with that. But yes, you are. He admitted defeat. Mm -hmm. So a lot of black men know they're, de or in their minds, believe they're defeated and they just go along with what they got going on because they're getting a paycheck. They mm -hmm. got a place to stay. Even though it may not be much, they're living check to check. It's still something. And a lot of people are in fear of not having anything. Yeah. And because the white man's face is on that dollar bill, black men, rich and poor, black men and women, rich and poor, know that that dollar bill is not accessible to them at any time if they do not chuck and jive mm. because their face is not on it. So you're giving power to a piece of paper and that is the reason why you're scrunching around selling your ass and your soul for money as black people. Whenever a black man is rich, mm -hmm. he did not get that because he was intelligent. He got that because he had to bend over backwards. Mm. Mm. I, I don't want to say this. There's a lot of woman hating uh, men. There's even one. Don't you know there's even woman hating women because of these yes. <laughs> because of these religions and stuff. There are women. And again, I don't know. <laughs> Aryan, Judas. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it sounds like this person has a little bit of disdain for black women. Yeah. Don't. And I don't know who NHNJ is. They say get a life, sis. Like, <laughs> isn't that crazy? Yeah, well, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, that's just some troll, you know. What's the, what's the NHA? They, you know, that's just a troll channel. How you doing, troll channel? It's all, it's cool. Give me some views. <laughs> but look, even if you have. If you have uh, uh, this black conscious background and you say that the white man is the devil, okay, the white man is the devil. That's what the, these black folks say. These black conscious, pro-black, blackly black. They would say. And be the same one 
white woman. True, true, cause I, you know, I don't have brothers. Come on here, they try to justify. And uh, but I, that's another story. But uh, okay, if the white man is the devil, and you're God, God is opposite of devil, correct? So, correct. so if the white man is a woman hater, and all that he do is praise men, he's a woman hater. Then you should be a woman lover and praise women. Right, but you gotta understand these coon ass niggas <laughs> are there. When you are, when you have basically black people in this country are defeated. It's checkmate. These uh -huh. people are checkmated, right? Mm -hmm. Black men are at the at at the very. How do I put this? Black men are pretty much the biggest targets in America. And so they're going to do anything that they feel they need to do in order not to be targets by the white man, which means going as far as acting like the white man. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these people aren't consciously thinking of it this way, but a lot of it just comes from a form of self-hate. You got a lot of black men that hate black women, specifically those that speak up and you know are intellectual because they don't even like being black themselves. And a lot of black men, since they don't want to deal with being black, they don't want to deal with a, another person, a female that is black, especially not one that's black and aware because it points out their flaws, it points out their weaknesses, it points out what they don't have and what they need to get yeah it, it reminds them that they ain't no man right see and see for me i'm gonna tell you see what you said is right on point see for some some guys for some for, for some men they would take offense to that there's nothing wrong with that you're supposed to be the best for your woman you're supposed to protect your mother you're supposed to be the best these these women our sisters they only try to, you know, some of them, they, it, it might sound a little harsh. Truth is harsh. But they're trying to tell you that you have a problem here. I still love you, but you got to work on it. Right. The thing about it is we don't want to work on it. We, wanna, we want to be accepted as the trash we become. As that's, right. And the reason why yeah. a lot of these black men go to white women and other races of women is because they don't have to protect those other women as they would have to protect the black woman. So it makes them feel as though life is easier. And in this system uh -huh. of this white supremacy, it would be because you're not having to protect her blackness on top of your blackness. And if you're not a strong black man, then you won't be able to deal with that. And that is the reason why you got a lot of black men who don't want to date black women, who are always talking bad about black women. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough to protect yourself if you ain't no woke black man and you ain't strong. If you uh -huh. a bitch made black man, it's going to be difficult for you to want to date a strong black woman woman because you would have to man up mm -hmm. and a lot of these black men hate black women secretly like men but with a <laughs> white woman you know as a, as a as a some type of replacement for not wanting to come out all the way, all the way out the closet <laughs> and then the whole thing is oh these black women they talk too much they just now mm -hmm. there are some black women that are hood rats and yeah. that's just what it is mm -hmm. but if you got any type of common sense you will not constantly put yourself in a place or a position to just only deal with hood rats. Mm -hmm. There are good black women. Yes. And that's what I don't understand either. And Malik Goldberg, what do you mean what is a strong black woman? Yes, Don Anderson, they want an easy way out. And this C Sierran person, <laughs> oh my God, this person is just ugh, exposing themselves for who and what they're not. <laughs> um, but Malik Goldberg, what do you mean? What is a strong black woman? I mean, are you? You're a black man, so again, that goes again. That points out if you're black, you should already know innately as a black woman, you should already know what a strong black man is. Mm -hmm. If you like men, particularly black men, and as a black man, if you like men, I mean, if you like women, particularly black women, you should know what a strong black woman is. If you like being black yourself. If you know who you are as a black person, you will innately know what type of strength that is. You wouldn't ask that question. So clearly, you're a coon or a homosexual. <laughs> hey, hey, Malik, why don't you define it? You define what a strong black woman is. What is it? 
what is the uh, a strong black woman? I don't I don't know. What what is it, Malik? You define it, right? Either you're a coon, a homosexual, or you're white. A Neanderthal. There there is the uh there is the uh the link, Malik. Come in and, and show us, tell us what a strong black woman is. Don't know. So no, see, he, he don't know. He, he don't know. Conversation. We ain't even gonna pay him no attention. No. Him, her, it, whatever that thing is, we're not gonna pay it no attention. Nah. Because I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I, I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. So you tell me. So clearly, this person goes on black platforms and don't even know what it means to be black. Right. Don't know. So why are you on the platform? I don't know. Go and watch some something that has nothing to do with this so that you don't be confused now i don't have a call in number he said he wants to call in click on the hangout link yeah click on the hangout link i gotta call in just click on the link come in the box with me right here that's where you be but uh and Malik, uh are you what's your what's your ethnicity just to keep it real basic are you black american just to keep it real basic. Well, Malik said, Malik, Malik said they're going to hit the link. You need, you need. Okay, well, Malik, I look forward to speaking with you. Yeah. You know, whatever a strong, whatever, whatever a strong black woman is, I would think you would say the same thing for a strong black man. It should coincide with one another. Right, correct. If this person is black, if this person ain't black, then you need to jump off the channel anyway. See, this is the thing about it. It goes back. Here you look. If I if, if you if you find a problem with me, either I get angry, oh, they're gonna Malik right there. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing, hey. sir? Uh, I'm doing well. Hi, Malik. I'm doing Can you well. hear me? Thanks. Thanks for thanks for allowing me to join the chat. Can Malik hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can yeah. hear you. Okay. So the first question that I have for you, Malik, is what is your ethnicity? Uh, I'm, I'm a, a soul brother. Soul <laughs> 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 hey, that's a good that's a good answer, Malik. There you go. Get out of here. He said he's a soul brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a soul brother. I'm a black woman. I'm, 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 I'm a black man. I'm a black man. <laughs> All right. So Malik, when, why, why, why do you not? You don't know what a strong black woman is as a black man. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you to define it because I, I was listening to the interaction and you said you, you were speaking on the strong black woman. I, would, I, I hear this all the time. I would, I would, I would like for you to define what's a strong black woman. What, what does that okay. mean? Okay, so a strong black woman, just like a strong black man, is a person who knows who they are as a black person in the system of white supremacy. They're comfortable with their blackness. <laughs> they love their blackness. And therefore, when they see another black person, they respect that black person until that person shows them otherwise. Which means that in order for you to love being black and love yourself genuinely, you have to be strong in the system that teaches you to hate you every day you walk out the door, every day you open up your laptop, and every day that you turn on your television. That is what a strong black person is. A strong black person. Right. A strong black woman, a strong black man. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I can dig that. I can dig that. I didn't want to come up come on here and just argue with you. Um, yes, sir. I, I can dig. I'm not, am I, I arguing? I'm not arguing. That. No, no. What, what I'm saying is that I can dig that. But I think uh, as we define ourselves mm -hmm. and, and, you, and define yourself as a, a black woman, a black man, when I, when I think about myself, I think about myself as a, a, a person that's learning. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, um, yeah, I could say I'm a strong black man. But no, uh, when I present myself, I'm just I'm just a man, and I have strong qualities about myself. And when I hear the term "strong black woman," I hear I, I hear things like, "Oh, I'm misindependent. Uh, I don't need a man 
to do this and this, this and right, that. Well, I just described that, it that's to what you. I hear. Pardon me? I just explained it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know I know you did. Um, did you ask a question right there? No, I didn't ask you a question. Well, well I'm saying uh, the way I define myself, I define myself as a man uh -huh. outside of being like the strong black man. You know, because mm -hmm. you can be a strong black woman and then you, you can step to a man and maybe you don't like this brother for whatever reason. So are you going right. to say- Right, see that goes to having to be equally yoked. That, that goes to being equally yoked. That isn't a detester for your level of knowledge as a black person. That just means that two people are not equally yoked. You know what I mean? I think that what people fail to understand a lot of the time, specifically black people who have a Europeanized mindset, whether it's intentional or unintentional, is that they think when a black person speaks about having knowledge of blackness that we're supposed to just all be monolithic, meaning that we're supposed to just all be super nice and super friendly and, you know, <laughs> act like docile white women. And that's not the case. You're not going to get that from every person that is aware of who they are as a black person. And so um, just because I'm aware of myself as a black woman doesn't mean that when I get with a guy or if there's a guy that's interested in me and he's nice and that I'm going to be interested in him back. That doesn't mean that he's a bad person. That doesn't mean that he's not strong. That doesn't mean that he's not aware of himself. That just means that we weren't equally yoked. That's all that means. Well, let, let me ask you a question, sister. Uh, and I'm saying sister. Uh, my name is uh, Brittany. Yeah. What's your, what's your name? What's your name? You can call me Deity. You can call me Deity. 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 Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, that awareness, do, do you think that awareness is holding you back in some kind of way? Absolutely. Um, and that's a great question. Anytime you are aware and knowledgeable in a, in a system or an environment, that has oppressed you, which means that everybody that looks like me, that's the same race as me, they're not aware, of course it's going to hold me back. Now, it could be for a good reason because, of course, I don't want to deal with someone that is not aware, but then it doesn't feel good because I'm in the world and everybody in the world doesn't think like me. So that in of itself can be um, difficult or it can hold me back from a relationship, but I would rather not be in a relationship with somebody who's not aware than to be in a relationship you know, I would rather be in a relationship with someone that's aware than not aware, just to say that I'm in a relationship, if that makes sense to you. Yes, now, not to get in your business, but are you in a relationship? No. Uh, and and why, are not, why aren't you in a relationship? Well, I'm in my 20s, and I'm building my own thing, and that's not necessarily an excuse, but in a way, I guess, you know you can't use that as an excuse to a certain point. I'm in my 20s and I'm building my own thing. And again, I live in a system in a society where most black men are not confident with being black. 